Okay, welcome back uh, for part two of uh, creating a texture set in Quixel Mixer 2020 and bringing it into the Cycles render engine. Uh, I'm not going to go step by step on this because it would take too long. Uh, I'm just going to show you the highlights of, of putting this material on. If you want to learn uh, a more detailed steps of how to bring in your textures that you create and hook them up to the principled shader, uh, check out my fourth video in my industrial bar stool. Um, it, it basically tells you the whole entire process in depth. Um, I'm not going to cover that again. Um, I'm just going to show you how I hook these up from Quixel. Okay, first things first, uh, we've started a new Blender file. Uh, we created a plane, got rid of the cube, created a plane, um, and then we hit tab to go into edit mode. And then once you're in edit mode, you can hit right click and then uh, it'll allow you to have the option to subdivide. And once you hit that button, a little menu will appear down here in the lower left corner. If you simply hit number of cuts 100, uh, that'll subdivide this plane and uh, give it the ability to bend with the um, modifier or, or not modifier with the displacement node we're going to use. Okay, so we've created a plane, we've subdivided it 100 times. We've also come over here and in our modifier stack and added a subdivision surface at a viewport of two. So 100 cuts in its subdivide and then a subdivision uh, surface modifier viewport two uh, will give us all of the geometry we need to get a, a good uh, displacement. Okay, I've opened up a shader editor here, which I have the material uh, set up. I've also set up a, um, to do so, I've set up a uh, file browser here. And then you can just simply go uh, wherever that file from Quixel is and then open it up. And then you can simply left click and drag these maps down in here by hovering over the icon and left clicking, drag it down. It'll create an image texture for you. Um, and then you just plug it in. All right, let's take a closer look. Um, here's our diffuse. Uh, it's simply going color to base color, um, and it's set to RGB like it is by default. Uh, we use a roughness map, again, from our file. This was a non-color map, and this goes into the roughness slot. We've used the specular map out of this. Um, it's non-color as well, goes into the specular. And then we have this normal map. Again, we just dragged and dropped it. Um, it's non-color. It goes into a normal map node. You simply hit Shift A, go to Vector, and then hit Normal Map and add that. It comes color to color, and then normal to normal on the principled shader. Okay, and then we are working in the Cycles Render Engine. So we are over here where it says Render Engine Cycles. Uh, I've set to uh, GPU Compute, uh, which I suggest you do if you have a, a good processor that Blender will accept. Uh, I have the render uh, set kind of high at 210 just because that's the uh, resolution that I want to uh, go with here at the end. Um, max bounces under light paths. I changed it from 12 to 6 because I didn't think we need 12. Um, and then as we go down further, I've turned off reflective caustics and refractive caustics. And then finally, I've set my tile size 256 by 256. So that's the only changes I've done in the Cycles render engine. Okay, with our plane uh, set up, uh, in order to get the displacement to work in the Cycles Render Engine, um, we have to add in our displacement map. Again, it's going to be one of these maps right here. And um, we can drag and drop, and it'll give us our image texture node. Um, it's going to be non-color. And then we're going to simply add by hitting right-click and going to, oh, not right-click, I'm sorry, Shift-A. And then we're going to go to Vector Displacement. We're going to add that node right there. And we're going to go out of our color into the height. I don't know if you can see that. Um, out of our color into our height. Let's get that a little easier to see. Into the height of this displacement. And then we're gonna kick this up into the displacement slot in our material output, okay? Once we have that set up like that, then we can come over here with our plane selected. We can come down to its materials. We can go down to the bottom here. We'll see it says displacement. This node here, this information here, is exactly the same as this information here. We can control it here or here. If we go down a little bit below in the surface, we want to come down to where it says displacement. We want to make sure that it says out of all these options, displace only. Okay. All right, so once we do that, uh, we're going to get uh, a bunch of weird stuff's going to happen. Um, at first, it's probably going to come out kind of jagged with flat tops, and it's not going to look right at all. 
uh, the way we adjust it is right here in this displacement node. Um, we have uh, two options really, uh, scale and mid-level. Um, and you're gonna have to just mess with these uh, back and forth until you get it to look right. Um, a lot of times it comes in very jagged and unusual looking, um, and it'll just take you messing with it. Uh, here is a good place to start. I set my mid-level 1.9 uh, and my scale to 0 0.08, okay? All right, and that should get you pretty close to what we have here um, for the ground plane. Um, it, we've added all the textures on, just like we do uh, normally. Um, the procedure is usually just the same. And then uh, we added this displacement map into a displacement node into the material output. And of course, we had to come into our material settings in our control panel and set it to displacement only. Okay, so the next thing that I did in order to get this scene to look like it is, um, is we added an HDRI. So an HDRI is a, a high dynamic range image and it's a 360 degree uh, photo essentially, if you didn't know, uh, that's taken at multiple exposures and it's what gives us this kind of realistic light. Um, and I'm using it actually also as the background. Sometimes you would use it just to light your scene and then put another background or something in there. I'm actually using it as the background because I think it looks neat and it matches this scene quite nicely. Um, by the way, the HDRI that I'm using is from HDRI Haven. Uh, I believe that's a, the guy's name is Greg Zoll. Um, he's a really cool guy. He makes the Node Wrangler add-on for Blender, and he probably even makes some other ones. I don't, I don't really know, but I use the Node Wrangler all the time, and he has awesome free HDRIs, so I highly suggest you check him out. He seems like a really cool guy. Okay, so we've got an HDRI in our scene. And by the way, if we wanna mess with our HDRI, we can come into our shader editor, click on object here, and go to world. Once we do that, after we've added an HDRI, which if you don't know how to do that, uh, real quick like, we can come to the world settings. And uh, where it says color, um, it'll usually be gray by default. There's a little button over here you can click, and then you'll have the option to pick an environment texture. Um, and then you'll just click the little, uh, file folder and then you can um, load the uh, HDRI from wherever you have it stored. So that's how I got the HDRI in here and once you do that in the world settings in your shader editor it'll have this one right here that says uh, table mountain and it's hooked into our background automatically for us so that's pretty cool. Now if I click that and then hit control T that will get me uh, these two nodes if I'm using the node wrangler. In order to use that if you're not familiar you have to go to edit uh, user preferences, add-ons, and then enable the Node Wrangler by putting a check in the box. Again, Greg Zoll is the guy who made this uh, add-on, which is really cool. And then he also runs HDRI Haven, uh, which is super cool. You can also get some cool textures there too. Um, Rob to Toodle, I, I'm sorry, I'm gonna mess up his last name. Um, he's also there with Texture Haven. They're kind of connected, kind of partners. And uh, they both seem like really cool guys. So check out their site at HDRI Haven. Okay, and if I wanna move the view here, I can simply come into the rotation where it says Z on the Z axis. I can just simply move uh, the, the Z and it'll turn the uh, HDRI by 360 degrees so you can get the view you want in the background. I wanted to have this ocean uh, set up back here um, so because uh, I think it looks pretty cool. All right, and uh, you can also adjust if this isn't level for some reason, you can use the X and the Y uh, to make sure that it looks a little more level with your scene. Um, you can see I had to adjust it just a little bit. Okay, so uh, that covers basically what we did here. Just in summary, we subdivided the plane with a 100 cuts. We added a subdivision surface, viewport two, so that we had enough geometry to bend. And then we added, I'm gonna go back to my uh, object nodes. We added each of our maps in the appropriate slot in our principal shader. And then we added our displacement map into a displacement node, into the displacement slot in our material output. With this plane selected, we went to materials and we made sure it said um, displacement only under the surface section. We added an HDRI. Um, and then just a couple other little things that I did and then we'll be done here. Um, I also added a sun, a sunlight. If we click on that, you can see that I set it to sun. The color is slightly in the yellow orange. It's kind of an old school approach. Um, and then the strength is set to 2.5. I said, I think it's set by a, to a thousand by default, which really is too powerful. So 2.5 and everything else looks good. 
Uh, and then the last step that I did to get this to look a little bit cooler um, and give it more of a filmic look, uh, crush out some of these blacks and stuff, was we went to the bottom of our render settings and we went to color management where it says look, I set it to high contrast. Okay, all right, and so uh, let's just check and make sure we covered everything. Um, I think if you uh, have trouble, the place you're going to probably have trouble with is on this displacement node, uh, getting the mid-level and the scale proper. Um, so I think I've covered everything that I did to get this scene to, to render out like you see here, and uh, there'll be a better image at the end. Um, anyways, I think that's about it, and I thank you for joining me in this tutorial, and I'll see you in the next one.